let's do something a little different in this layer bit. We're not going to focus on the web or the UI. We won't learn about Laravel. Uh, let's instead talk about basic probability. OK, so I have a penny here. Imagine I had 100 pennies, and you had 100 pennies, and we decided to play a game, a simple coin flipping game. I flip a coin, and if it comes up heads, then you have to give me one of your pennies. But if it comes up tails, then I have to give you one of my pennies. OK, so imagine we played this game over and over. Here's the first question. Would we ever get to a point where one of us had all of the pennies? Now again, if you have a general understanding of probability, you already know the answer is 100% absolutely. Uh, but otherwise, it can seem a little confusing. Because think about it. We both have 100 pennies each, so there's no real advantage there. And when I flip a coin, it's basically 50-50, right? I say basically, this is kind of an aside, but I remember reading a study where they found that whatever is on top when you flip the coin has the smallest uh, of an advantage. So if heads is on top when I flip it, maybe the odds are 51% it'll come up heads. Uh, but if tails is on top when I flip it, then there's a 51% chance that tails uh, will be what it lands on. But yeah, for the example here, let's assume 50-50. So we both have 100 pennies, no advantage. The coin toss is 50-50, so no advantage. So couldn't you imagine a situation where the game basically goes on forever? Uh, absolutely, but yeah, again, basic probability says no. There's a 100% chance that one of us will end up with all of the pennies. And this is a general concept known as the gambler's ruin. Let's have a look. The gambler's ruin is a concept in statistics. A gambler playing a game with negative expected value, expected value is like the weighted average, will eventually go broke regardless of their betting system. Uh, let's see. Another statement is that a persistent gambler with finite wealth, like I have 100 pennies, playing a fair game, like a coin flip, 50-50, will eventually and inevitably go broke against an opponent with infinite wealth. An example of that, of course, would be the casino. Okay, and for an example, I found another tab here. Now, this example is the exact one we just talked about, where we each have a set number of pennies, we flip a coin, and if I win, I get the penny. If you win, you get the penny. So if the process is repeated, the probability that one of the two players will eventually lose all his or her pennies must be 100%. And then here, we even have the formula for the probability that player one or player two will lose everything. OK, so let's play around with this programmatically. I have a blank index.php file. So let's set up a couple classes, one for our game. This is our coin flip game. I'll just call it game. Now, to play this game, we, of course, need two players. So why don't we also set up a class for a player? OK, so give me player one, abbreviated to p1, and then also player number two. Now, I have PHP 8 installed, so I will assign these as part of the constructor. Cool. So now I can create a game that consists of one player, and maybe a player has a name and a number of pennies. So I will do Joe. Joe has 100 pennies. And then we'll do Jane, and she also has 100 pennies. OK, let's update this here. You need to give us a name and then also your number of pennies. So we have our game, and what should we say to begin the game? Well, how about game start? All right, there's our next method. Start a new game. OK, so think about it. What needs to happen here? Let's go back to an example. Now flip one of the pennies. And actually, flip seems like a keyword, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and add that method. Flip one of the pennies with each player having a 50% probability of winning. OK, so how would we simulate something that could be heads or could be tails? Well, how about a random number between 0 and 1? And actually, returning the number is fine here, because it's truthy and falsy. But if we want to be a little more on the nose, we could return a string that represents heads or tails. OK, so now think about it. When we start the game, the very first thing we should do is flip the coin. And we might say, when you flip it, if it comes up heads, then we'll just say um, player one is always heads and player two is always tails for this example. 
So if we flip the coin and it comes up heads, that means player one gets a point. They score a point. And actually, with that in mind, maybe I should say player one, and let's call a method score. All right. So when you score a point, we give you another penny. This pennies plus plus. But also, uh, as part of that, um, player two should lose a point. So we could either add another line here, or maybe what if we passed player two to this method? Would that be weird? Let's try it. When you call score, you get a penny, but also player two loses a penny. So yeah, we could add getters for this. You know what? Let's just make them public here. It's fine. Cool. Okay, so now we have a game. We can start the game. When we call start, we flip a coin, and if it comes up heads, then we award a point to player one. Otherwise, we award a point to player two. All right, and this is good, but we also need to repeat this coin flip over and over, right? So why don't we wrap this within a while true statement? Okay, so while true, indefinitely, flip a coin and award a point. Let's do another check down here, and we'll say, uh, what do we want to check? Well, if, if either player is out of money, so what if we said, if player one, let's have fun, if player one is bankrupt, uh, or this player two is bankrupt, then the game is over. So maybe we can call a method like uh, game over, or how about end? All right, so a couple things to do here. We need a method called end, and then we also need this method bankrupt. And this is really just kind of a, a fun getter. Check to see if your pennies is equal to zero. So if you have no more pennies, you are bankrupt. And if that's the case, the game is immediately over. All right, so let's come down and let's begin by just saying var dump game over. Okay, I think we're ready to give this a test. We start by creating a game and we call game start. Game start creates a while loop where we flip a coin and we award points to either player one or player two. Then each time we've awarded a point, we check to see if either player is bankrupt. And if so, we end the game, which at the moment simply says game over. Okay, let's open up a terminal. Let's move it to the right. And I'll say PHP on the current file. And of course we get game over that provides no information whatsoever. So for the next step, why don't we use here docs like this. And we'll say game over, winner is, and let's figure out who is the winner. Well, maybe we need a method for this, winner, and that's going to return either player one or player two. So maybe I could say, how do we check this? Um, return, and let's see, is player one's pennies, or let's again, stick with some fun terms here. Is player one's bankroll greater than player two's bankroll? If that's the case, then player one won. Otherwise, player two wins the game. Okay, so now we have another method here. Again, we're doing this with objects. If we took a procedural approach, this would be quite a bit shorter and probably a little more practical for this little example. But yeah, I'm taking this approach to, to help teach uh, basic object communication. Okay, so we have bankroll, and that's simply a getter that tells me what your pennies count is. All right, all right, cool. So now we know who uh, the winner is. So I can change this to this winner name. All right, let's give it another run. Oh, whoops. Of course, that's a method. All right, one more time. And it looks like Joe won. And if we keep running it, eventually, come on, Jane. There we go, she won a game. And of course, uh, it's effectively random, 50-50. And yeah, even if Joe won 99 times in a row, of course, that would have no bearing on the results of the 100th coin flip. Uh, that's something that's unrelated to Gambler's Ruin. It's another one I think called Gambler's Fallacy. And that's just the, the general idea that past performance has no bearing on future performance. So even if Joe wins 99 times in a row, it, it's, it's irrelevant to the next coin flip. It's still going to be 50-50. Okay. Now, what might be fun here is to track how many rounds it took before a winner was decided. So let's do this. Let's scroll up and on the game, let's add a property called rounds or, or flips, rounds, flips. 
Let's do flips. And we'll start with one. And every time we flip a coin, we will increment that by one. And let's do that right down here, I guess. This flips plus plus. Okay, so now when we end the game, we could say winner is such and such, total flips is this flips. Okay, let's try it again. All right, Joe won and it took 5,000 coin flips for Jane to run out of her 100 pennies. Okay, let's do it again. This time Jane won and it took 4,698. And what you'll find is that number, the total flips, is going to, to have a massive spread. So yeah, in this case, it took twice as long and that's just that's just how it goes. It took that many turns for Jane to eventually run out of all of her pennies. But again, the point here is to illustrate that eventually one of these players is going to end up with all of the chips, so to speak. If you play long enough, that will always be the case. And think about it, this is assuming that Joe and Jane always have the same number of chips. What if Joe is playing against the casino where the casino basically has an infinite number of chips? We'll just represent that by, how about they have 10,000 pennies, you know? Maybe your home casino when, when your family comes to, to play cards or something like that. In this case, the odds that the casino will eventually win all of the pennies is not 100% because there's always an opportunity for Joe to win. But again, the odds that the casino will, will probably win is very, very high. And in fact, if we switch back to the browser, here is the formula that we talked about at the beginning of the video. This tells us the probability that player one will eventually lose all of their pennies. So n is pennies, right? So we take the player two's pennies and we divide that by the total number of pennies in the game. So to illustrate this, player two is casino. We take their pennies and we divide that by all pennies in the game, which would be 10,100. And this is going to tell me the probability that Joe is going to lose all of his pennies. In this case, there's a 99% chance that the casino is going to win. Okay, so Joe will win, you know, one out of 100 times, but those aren't very good odds. Let's give it a shot. We run it, but notice it took a little longer that time. Peach be hesitated a bit because it took 768,000 coin flips for the casino to eventually win. If we run it again, casino still wins. But again, notice the spread there. This is just how it goes. It's random. Run it again, and you're gonna notice probably for every single run I do here, Casino is going to win. So why don't we extend this where when we begin the game, we immediately tell you the odds that each player uh, has of winning. Maybe I will change this to play. And then when we start the game, I can also dump something to the screen. So start, we'll still call play, but yeah, it will also uh, echo something to the page. Like game start, and then this player one's name odds, and then we'll have whatever um, the actual value is there, and then player two's odds like that. Okay, now let's calculate this. Um, I could put an odds method on game, or honestly, it could even go on player if you really want it to. So for example, if a player wants to be able to figure out what their odds are, that's probably fair. Uh, in order to do that, they need to know the other player's penny count. So let's accept the other player and then we just do that calculation. Uh, player two's bankroll, and what I'm doing here is exactly this. So player two's bankroll divided by all uh, of the pennies. So divided by this player's bankroll plus player two's bankroll. Okay, and let's return that, and now we can make this section dynamic. So what this player one's odds versus player two, and then the next one is reversed. Give me player two's odds versus player one. And that might be right. Let's give it a run. Okay, so we're getting close, uh, but this is a little confusing. Joe's odds, 99%, that's actually 99% chance of losing. So we need to tweak that a little bit uh, by saying, let's do one minus that. All right, run it again. There we go. So now I can see Joe's odds are very, very low. Why don't we also round all of this to maybe, uh, I don't know, like four decimal points and give it another run? Yeah, or maybe even three 
and then we'll stack a percentage sign on there. And I think that's right. Check my work here. Okay, so now we can see Joe's odds are 1%. Really though, we need to multiply by 100, don't we, to make it a uh, full number. So let's times 100 and then stack that on. I don't know, check my work, that might be wrong. But um, close enough, uh, if I made a mistake there. This is basically what we are looking at here. So the casino wins and it took 7,800 uh, flips for them to deplete Joe of all of his pennies. But now notice that took a little bit longer. Wow, what is that, one million? Uh, one million flips. So it doesn't matter whether it's quick or very long, the casino is still going to come out on top. But further, even if they have the exact same uh, coin count, yeah, I mean, this is just how it works. Anyone who's ever played Monopoly here uh, knows how this works. Uh, somebody is eventually going to end up with everything. And actually, let's do this. Um, let's say game over. I uh, will say this, player one's name, pennies, and then we will spit this out, P1, bankroll, and then we'll do the same one for player two. Just to show you, at the end of the game, of course, one person has everything. So when the game ends, Joe has nothing, and the casino has everything. Give it another run, no matter what. One side ends with everything. Let's keep doing it until Joe finally wins. And good, there we go. In this case, Joe was the winner, and he ended up with everything, and the casino was uh, penniless. But yeah, don't forget, this is all assuming that the casino doesn't have an infinite number of pennies, which of course they do. Which is why we always say the casino always wins.